Hey friends, today it's all about the magic techniques, wet on wet, wet on dry. I lovingly call it wowed. All right, friends, today I am using Academy watercolor paper. It's a cold press, so it's got a little bit of texture. I'm in love with this paper. It's a new one for me, but I'm a fan. And of course, the Art for Joy's Sake dagger brush. It's a quarter inch dagger. If this is the first time you're seeing it, welcome to my world. It's a lovely place to be. All right, we are talking about wet on wet, wet on dry. I'm gonna be using this Paul Rubens palette. I got it on Amazon, I was curious. And it's, it's great, it's fun, it's pretty affordable. There's more affordable ones out there with similar quality, but that's not what we're here for today. Let's get ready to paint. Now, before we dive into an actual painting, I want to show you the two techniques that I believe are pure gold when it comes to your watercolor journey. That is wet on wet, wow, and wet on dry. And when you put them together, they are wowed, yes wowed and you are going to be wowed. I'm sure you've heard of wet on wet and wet on dry. Maybe you haven't. If you haven't, this is definitely for you. But if you have heard of these two techniques before, this is still for you because I'm going to introduce them to you in a way that you may have never experienced before. Here's why. Here we go. Wet on wet. Wet the page first. This is a great exercise. Wet the page first and then grab your favorite color and start swooshing and dabbing and painting it in. Now, remember friends, you're not painting anything specific. This is just strokes on the page. I want you to pay attention now. How wet was your paper? Were there puddles? It's okay if they're puddles. I didn't have puddles. I usually do have puddles. Puddles are good, but pay attention. Were there puddles when you first started? How did the paint react? I didn't have puddles, so my blending and bleeding was more subtle, as you can see. I still am getting the blending, but it's slower and it's more subtle. But that is wet on wet, friends. And you are gonna start most of your paintings with wet on wet or wet on dry. These two techniques rely on each other. They feed off of one another. Here's wet on dry. It's just wet color from your brush, placed on a dry page. You're gonna get more vibrancy right away. I start most of my paintings with wet on dry, I'll be honest. Now add some color, more water, whatever it may be, and swoosh those around and see what happens. But this is it, friends. Wet on wet, wet on dry. Now we're gonna see how these interact with one another in a real life painting situation. Let's go. All right, friends, we are going to work on a flower. Now, we're gonna use all of the wet on wet, wet on dry techniques that we've already learned about, but we're gonna apply them to a real thing, okay? So here we go. I know I'm painting off page, but here's the thing. I want you to just dive in. You don't have to follow me exactly, but I'm grabbing wet color off my palette, okay? I've sprayed this palette, so the colors on the palette are already a little juicy. You may need to add some water to your brush but grab that color and take it right to the dry page. And we're just making some petals. This is a generic flower. This isn't gonna look like any specific type of flower. Okay, I moved it back down. You can see it all now. I'm adding a second color while those first petals are still wet. I'm using this dagger brush. You know I love my dagger. I'm using the short curved edge and I'm just bouncing some short lines around the center. Look at that. Now. That darker red, I'm not gonna tell you which color I'm using because I just want you to focus on choosing whatever darker red you have, but look how it's bleeding into those wet petals. So you started with wet on dry, but now it's wet on wet. And that is the reality of painting with these two techniques. Wet on dry very quickly, more times than not, transitions into wet on wet in a painting. And that is really the key. That is really the crux of what we're here for today. Wet on wet, wet on dry, wowed. They really work together. They work best together. So I'm continuing on here, adding purple at the tips of each of these petals and letting that bleed in. Now I've rinsed my brush and I grabbed a yellow. I'm being somewhat careful not to bump the yellow too much into the pinks and reds I've already laid down. 
If I'm getting too much bleeding, because that's another aspect of wet on wet, you can just bump two colors next to each other and boom, they start exploding into one another. If you get too much of that, rinse and dry your brush off and kind of scoop up some of that color. Let's go into the leaves, wet on dry, make that leaf shape, whatever it may be, a little bit of water in between to blend, blend, to continue to shape the leaf. Just checking in. You're not overthinking this, are you? If you need to take a break, put the painting aside, let things dry, do it. There's no shame in that. Now I'm grabbing a blue and boom, it becomes wet on wet. So again, wet on wet, wet on dry, they are like twins. They're like fraternal twins, friends. You really, I don't want to say you can't have one without the other, but they work so well together and they are literally, without a doubt, the heart and soul of watercolor painting. And see, I just bumped into that purple there, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Let it be. Let and see, I moved on. I'm going to let that blue green purple situation down there dry and I'm going to make another leaf. Keep working around. Really bright green, added another slightly darker green on top and let it blend. See how it's slowly blending into one another. I say all the time, watercolor is surrender. So sometimes you just have to let it do what it does. That doesn't even make sense, but whatever, you know what I mean. Little close up here, more work in the center with a very, very dark purple using the tip of my brush. Everything is still wet on this flower, believe it or not. Believe it or not, everything is still wet. That's a beautiful thing because that means you have an opportunity to add more layers and let things blend together. But look at that now, look at that contrast. Now, something to note, your wet and wet color will get more intense as your paper dries. Let me say that again, your wet on wet technique, the result of the wet on wet will be more vibrant as your page dries. So when you drop color into a very, very wet area, that color will be, it'll spread out, it'll be less intense. But as your color dries, as that first color you put down dries, so it's just damp, let's say, the color that you add on top of it, while it's still gonna blend and bleed, it's gonna be more bold and more striking. So just something fun to keep in mind as you paint. Now remember, my painting doesn't look like anyone else's out there. You know that about me. I paint the way I wanna paint. I don't follow a formula. So the same applies to you. Now I'm gonna add some yellows to my leaves here. Super fun. Same thing. I'm just using those initial strokes that I put down as a wet on dry technique. And now they are my wet on wet canvas, essentially. Hopefully that makes sense. So much fun here though. If you can feel confident, I use the word master very tentatively because the word master, you know, mastering a skill that can seem so scary, right? But if you can get to the point where you feel super confident with these two techniques in a couple of different ways, you are going to be on fire in your art journey. These two techniques are gold. These are where it's at. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to that center. Remember, now that things are drying, any color I add is gonna be more vibrant. Look at how that is swirling and twirling together, friends. That is, oh, that is when I get most excited about watercolor, I cannot even begin to tell you. You can scoop things up if there's too much color going on, too much blending. See, scooping it up with a clean, dry brush. And notice the shine on that page. That shine on the page is telling you things are still damp. Now I've got white, I've got white. There we go. White gives you the ultimate wet and wet experience. Little bit of white ink, like a calligraphy ink, a white watercolor. I can't even look at that, friends. Look at that. And I know I am breaking the rules. I am not a purist watercolorist. I know purist watercolorists say what? Use the whites of your paper. Eh, whatever. 
I use white when it feels good, friends. Now look at where we're at. Look at where we're at now. Things are starting to dry nicely. Still damp, but there are some areas that are nice and dry. And that means it's time for detail. Oh, this is one of my favorite parts. Who am I kidding though? They're all my favorite parts. And yes, I did just put two colors on my brush at one time. Going in with the very tip of my brush, this is, we're back to wet on dry, friends. We're back to wet on dry, and I'm adding in these swirly, kind of contour-like strokes. You have to have kind of the perfect amount of uh, wet water dampness on your brush along with paint for this to really flow. You'll get the hang of it. You can always pull off to the side and do a little practicing. This is usually about the point when everything starts to slip away. Now, I know I've interrupted you because I want you to soak in this moment. It's amazing, isn't it? I'm gonna zoom in here so you can really see. Now, if a little bit of bleeding still happens because your paper's still damp, it's okay, don't panic, let it go. It, it can be beautiful, see what it does, see what it does, let it be. I'm actually pulling some of the wet, dark purple color from the center out and down onto this particular petal. That's another great way to use the wet on dry technique. Look at that. Don't obsess over each petal. Get in, get her done, get out. You can always come back. You can always come back and add more detail later, but if you hyper-focus on one petal, I'm telling you, you're not gonna be happy. Same thing in the leaf here. Now this leaf is more wet than those petals were. But look at that effect. It's blending ever so subtly. It's just lovely. Look at that blend. You're still getting the detail and the contrast, but because the page is still a little bit damp, woo! Oh, friends, if you're not painting already, I know you're gonna be painting within a couple minutes because you just cannot help yourself, right? Right. I know. I know. Now listen. When you do try this for yourself, don't feel like you have to copy me. Now, you certainly can copy me. I want you, if you want to copy, copy. If that's how you learn best, you have my permission to copy this artwork. But I just also wanna give you permission to not feel like you have to. Take these techniques and run with them, all right? I'm just adding more leaves here, wet on dry. I'm going right over with some detail, wet on dry, because that leaf is most certainly dry. And you can see the distinct difference. Look how crisp those lines are because that leaf was dry compared to the one just next to it. Are we having fun yet, friends? Are we having fun yet? Added a little bit of yellow. Now, I say this again and again in my videos, but I'm gonna say it once more. I, on purpose, do not tell you the names of the colors I'm using. Now, if you wanna comment down below and ask me the name of a color at a certain timestamp, by all means, go ahead and ask me. I respond to all comments and I will tell you. But while I'm painting and instructing, I don't, and here's why. Because I don't want you panicking about using the exact brand of blue that I used. I just want you to use a blue. I just want you to paint. Okay, here's some blueberries, same technique, a little lazy circle with one blue and then a brighter blue popped in wet on wet. Watch it flow. Now look, it's blending out and as that blends and bleeds, it's gonna soften its intensity. Here's a really dark blue I'm adding in as a third color, still wet on wet. I'm a big fan of adding berries, friends. I'm a big fan of berries. They just do something, something for the painting. And some leaves, of course, some little baby blueberry leaves. So cute. Any green you love. And remember, the wet page is an opportunity. The wet page is an opportunity. Remember, friends, it's all about making art for joy's sake. So this painting should look like yours. No one else's. I grabbed a different green, popped it into that leaf to reshape a little bit and add a little bit of dimension. Woof, look at that. Using the tip of that dagger brush, various amounts of pressure. I do have some incredible videos 
about painting leaves and using one brush to its fullest advantage. You can go check those out. I will link them down below. They're great to watch, great practice. And I added some white again because, well, why not? If you don't have white watercolor or white ink, do yourself a favor and grab some. But friends, the bottom line is we have had a blast, haven't we? And now you can't wait to paint and I can't wait for you to paint. So go get it, wet on wet, wet on dry, go after it and have such a blast doing it. I need a little bit more dark blue here. Really, really dark, a little bit of black even. I rarely use black, but in this moment, as these blueberries have dried, I want more intensity, so I'm going right in. Add some more blueberries. Here's the wet on dry, wet on dry. And now that I've established those shapes, I can go back in and get my wet on wet on. That kind of sounded fun. Wet on wet on. Hmm. Anyway, oh, friends, painting is life-giving. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Please hit me up in comments. Ask all the questions. I am here for you. And I cannot wait until we paint together next time. But until then, friends. Happy, happy painting. <laughs>